Nashville crispy chicken? Let's find out. It's probably the best sandwich I've ever had. It's super crispy, but it's also really juicy. So would you guys come back? Yep. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, here's our car. The location is on the back. It's McDonald's. What? What? <laughs> what? Oh, get out of here. No way. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Try some buttermilk crispy chicken. It's right around the corner at McDonald's. Buttermilk. <laughs> <laughs> Back here on Ask the Coach, Joe Myers talking with Glasgow head coach Jeff Garman after his ball club wins it 24-20 over Louisville Holy Cross last night at the Forked Bank Bowl at Campbellsville University. And uh, the uh, Scotties, uh, let's see, Campbellsville won the toss and deferred last night. So Glasgow did get the football uh, to start the game. And uh, each team punted on its first possession. Uh Holy Cross uh, would uh, uh, get the ball back at its own 31-yard line if the Scotties punted that second time. Uh, they would eventually turn the football over on downs as the Scotty defense held strong, and uh, Glasgow would get it back at the 36-yard line with about 2.42 to go in the first quarter, and uh, the Scotties would get their first score of the night right there on a four-play 64-yard drive. Ben Hughes catches a 61-yard touchdown pass from Desi Austin. Uh, drive took just a minute and 36 seconds. Two-point conversion was no good. Scotty's led 6 nothing with 104 to go in the first quarter, and memory serves me correctly, Jeff, that was just a, a quick slant that you guys hit right there to Ben, and, and he did the rest. Yeah, they were playing zero coverage with no safety back in the back, and and uh, Ben made a nice move to get himself open, and we had enough time to throw the ball, and it, it, you know, that's not a real hard catch and throw, to be honest with you. And and, and we were able to outrun them to get down there to the end zone. But, uh, you know, that's that was kind of their philosophy. And uh, their philosophy kind of changed as the game went on because you started noticing they started putting safeties back there in the back and everything else. So, like, like we said going into the game, like I told the boys, there were going to be opportunities to make plays. We just had to make them. They gambled about as much on defense, at least early on, as, as any defense I can remember seeing lately. You know, and that defense, I don't know if it necessarily goes along with the offensive philosophy that they had because they weren't going to try to beat you downfield uh, on, on offense. So they were going to try to kind of ground and pound you a little bit and control the clock and everything, and then – they were just going to go all out and put 11 guys up on the line on defense. It was just a matter of us keeping our composure. And, and, and like I told the boys, when people do that, they've got you outnumbered. There's going to be some ugly plays. But for every ugly play, there's a play out there that you can make that can go 60 or 70 at any time. Holy Cross answered right back. They get the football back at their own 46-yard line. Uh, seven plays, 54 yards. Uh, two minutes and 29 seconds later, Evan Perry uh, would score on a four-yard run. The uh, extra point good by Jake Brusher. Uh, and Holy Cross had its first lead at 7-6 to six with 10.37 to go in the first half. Scotty's turned the football over on downs on their next possession uh, and uh, gave the football back to Holy Cross uh, at its own one-yard line after Glasgow uh, got inside the 10-yard line and uh, could not score. Uh, And, Jeff, we were talking about this off mic, but uh, obviously, you know, anybody who's watched you play the first two weeks has seen you've had times where you've had trouble once you got inside the 10 and goal-to-go situations. Uh, What what are you guys going to have to do to overcome the the issues you've had there the first two ball games? Well, first of all, you know, you know, we're, we're, when you get in those situations, you want to try to impose your will over on your opponent and, and be physical and, and, and try to move them out of the way. Right now we're struggling a little bit with that phase, and that doesn't come as no great shock. I mean, we're playing a lot of younger guys, and, and as, as coaches we've got to – kind of be a little more creative I think down there in the in the in the red zone and and uh and and try to find a matchup down there that that suits us and 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 try to take advantage of it uh you know I think Jasper runs the ball really well hard up in the inside but it's kind of a they're just kind of we're not getting a good push up there and 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 uh you know, we have addressed it. We worked on it this week. We have a period every every day that we do short yardage type situations and down at the goal line. And, and uh, 
and we just got to continue to try to improve in that area. But a lot of that's going to improve in time when, when our boys become a little more physical. Holy Cross would wind up punting uh, after Glasgow turned it over on downs. Uh, Scotty's had gone back to field the punt. The punt gets muffed. Holy Cross recovers the muffed punt at its own, or excuse me, at the Glasgow 16 yard line. Uh, and uh, wasn't looking good right there, Jeff. You, you know, Holy Cross is going to get the ball back to start the third quarter. They get that muff punt with 3.28 to go in the, in the first half, and uh, they're thinking we'll score here, we'll get the ball back, start the third quarter, and maybe try to open this game up. But your defense came up with a huge stop right there. Uh, you pushed them out of there and, uh, and forced them to turn the football over on downs. And Just how big was that for your defense to get a stop right there before halftime? Oh, it was crucial. I mean, that was the turning point in the game, I thought. Uh, and I was so proud of the boys. I mean, they were tired. I mean, they were really tired. And they found a way to suck it up and and, and go out there and get a stop in a tough situation. And and those are those are signs that you got a you've got a pretty good football team when when you can do things like that when your back's against the wall and make some plays right there. And and defensively, we just came up big and. And uh, I felt a whole lot better going into the second half. And, and uh, you know, we were fortunate there, you know, not to give up a score. I think, you know, that would be considered a turnover. That was our first turnover of the year. And, and uh, you know, Jasper catches those punts, and he does a good job of it. And I thought the guy got a little up on him more, and I was kind of looking for a flag. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm not for sure on the ruling of – how many yards you've got to give somebody, but I mean, he was like right up against him, and and uh, it, you know, nine times out of ten, Jasper Mundy catches that punt tonight. He didn't, but but what I liked about it was we didn't hang our head, and, and we didn't hang our head, and and we dug in there and we played good defense and got a stop, and 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 uh, and, and it was big, it was big, especially with them having the ball starting off the second half. So we went into halftime with Holy Cross holding a 7-6 to six lead over the Scotties. The Cougars came out, got the ball at their own 30-yard line to start the third quarter. They go on a 12-play, 70-yard drive uh, that took 5 minutes and 36 seconds. Evan Perry would wind up breaking loose for a 23-yard touchdown run. Brucher added the extra point for Holy Cross, and that gave them a 14-6 to six lead with 6.24 to go in the third period. Scotties came right back, though, and answered uh, after taking over at the Holy Cross 47-yard line. Uh, I think it was a good uh, kick return by Jasper that set you up in good position right there at the at the Holy Cross 47. Uh, seven plays, 48 yards later, two minutes and 15 seconds off the clock. Jasper then scores on a one-yard touchdown run. Two-point conversion failed, uh, left Holy Cross with a 14-12 to lead with 4.09 to go in the third period. But uh, uh, your offense did a really nice job to answer back after Holy Cross had, had taken that eight-point lead. You guys get right back on the scoreboard, Jeff. Yeah, and, and and it was important that we answered right there, and and uh, I thought the boys just kept their composure, and they never panicked, and and and, and they kept the course, and and uh, you know they they believed in it all the way to the end, uh, and and that makes you proud as a coach. Holy Cross turned the football over on downs on their next possession. Scotties would punt on their next possession, giving Holy Cross the football back at their own 38-yard line. Six plays and 62-yard drive uh, by Holy Cross. They went two minutes and 41 seconds. Evan Perry would score on a 31-yard run here. The kick was no good, uh, and uh, that left Glasgow trailing 20-12 to with 10.51 to go in the uh, ball game. Scotties would then come back, turn the football over on downs inside the 10-yard line once again. However, after Holy Cross took over at the 7, uh, this is the play that Jeff was alluding to back during the first segment, a uh, huge play. Uh, the Scotty defense came up with a deflection. Again, uh, we thought it was maybe Draven Pope that got the deflection. Matt Molden, we know, came down with the interception, uh, and uh, that gave the Scotties football back Right at the 10-yard line, two plays later, they were in the end zone when uh, Gavin Bird caught a 12-yard touchdown pass from Desi Austin. Two-point conversion failed, but the Scotties are back to within two points. They're trailing 20-18 to 18 with 7.39 to go in the fourth quarter. Um, I'm trying to recollect, Jeff, but I, I seem to remember uh, Desi running around quite a bit in the pocket right there. That play took some time to develop, and he ran around long enough to find Gavin uh, open in the end zone back there. 
Yeah, he did, and and it was a it was a play I think where Desi, uh, you know, bought time, and Gavin was able to get back there on that back line, and uh, Desi threw a strike, and and, and Gavin caught it. It it, it was a, a big play at that time. Holy Cross was forced to punt on their next possession. Each team turned the football over on downs uh, on their next possession. And, and, Jeff, you guys went for it on fourth down, uh, I believe right around your own 41, 42-yard line with about four minutes to go in in the game. Just kind of give me your thought process there. How much did you think about punting? I think you had still three timeouts left at that time. Uh, how much how much was, was punting a consideration and why the decision to go ahead and go for it at that point? Well, you know, A, number one, they had a punt returner back there that could run it back on you at any time. Uh, you know, I just felt like that, you know, if we were going to make a play, we're going to have to uh, kind of force in our boy's hand. We're, we're going to have to make a play here. And if we didn't get it, you know, I knew I had three timeouts sitting in my back pocket. So we they were probably going to try to run the football. And uh, we just had to come up and stop them. And that's just the way it was. And uh, after the Scotties turned it over on downs, Glasgow's defense came up with a huge stop, forcing a turnover on downs by Holy Cross. And that gave Glasgow the ball back at their own 32-yard line, and that set uh, the winning drive up. Um, it took Glasgow just 31 seconds to go 68 yards in four plays. Ben Hughes catches that 52-yard touchdown pass, a beautiful strike thrown by Desi Austin down the left sideline. Ben makes a one-handed catch between a couple of defenders, breaks a couple of tackles, gets into the end zone uh, for the go-ahead score. The two-point conversion failed, uh, but Glasgow led 24-20 to with 118 to go in in the ball game and uh you know a 31 second 68 play or 68 uh, yard drive jeff um that's certainly there's a lot of good things about this offense that you guys are running but that's one of them is the fact that you know if you're trailing late in the ball game uh you feel good about your chances to be able to go down and get a quick score and no nobody panicked and, and that's what we do every day you know, we go no huddle. I mean, it's just – it was just another drive for us. Now, there was a little bit more of an importance put on it because we figured it was going to be the last drive of the night. But uh, that's just what we do every day. So, it's not like it's a, a real crazy atmosphere over there when that situation arises. That's what we do every day. And in and, and, and the end, that's what we expected. And Holy Cross obviously put in a, a passing situation, uh, getting the ball back with no timeouts left, just a minute 17 to play. Uh, and uh, Scotty defense uh, came up uh, with the stop that they had to have. And Glasgow winds up going away with a 24-20 to victory over Holy Cross to go to 1-1 one one on the year. We'll come back in just a moment, look at the final stats, and just uh, get a brief comment from Coach on uh, Glasgow's next opponent, the Barron County Trojans. We're back after this on WCLU Sports. Chicken, uh, let's find out. It's probably the best sandwich I've ever had. It's super crispy, but it's also really juicy. So, would you guys come back? Yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, here's our car. The location is on the back. It's McDonald's. What? What? <laughs> what? Oh, get out of here. No way. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Try some buttermilk crispy chicken. It's right around the corner at McDonald's. Buttermilk? <laughs> <laughs> 